Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about whether or not you should mix niacinamide and vitamin C on your face in your skincare. I have seen so much debate and like controversy about this topic because people have different opinions about this. So I did my own research and I came up with my own conclusion. So if you wanna hear my take on this very controversial topic, then just keep watching. Can you hear my dogs? Because you're going to be hearing my dogs because they are very upset that I am upstairs and they are downstairs and they want me downstairs. So let's start by just talking about what these two ingredients are. Ascorbic acid is vitamin C. So I'll be referring to it mostly as ascorbic acid only because that's like the correct scientific name of it. But anyway, vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin and it's really useful in skincare because they've actually found that vitamin C when applied topically to your skin can help kind of negate the UV radiation damage that's done to our skin cells. And also it helps with collagen production. And the way that it helps with collagen production is that it actually serves as a cofactor for two really important enzymes that help produce these two amino acids that actually can catalyze the production of collagen and also vitamin C can also help to stabilize collagen so it's not as heat sensitive. And then on the other side, niacinamide is vitamin B3 and it also helps with collagen production. So first I just want to talk about some basic chemistry about niacinamide. Niacinamide is slightly basic and when it's combined with any acid or any base for that matter, um, it'll actually form niacin and this is a reaction that takes a very, 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 very long time to occur because niacinamide is an amide and amides are extremely stable compounds. Now, if you look on the screen right here, I will probably have inserted two photos of niacinamide and also niacin. And you can see that niacinamide differs from niacin because there's a difference in the functional group at the very end of the molecule. So in niacinamide, it is an NH2 group and in niacin, it's a hydroxyl group of oxygen and hydrogen together. There have been a lot of studies done that show that niacin basically perform the same function as niacinamide um, with collagen production, but the one caveat here is that niacin can actually cause vasodilation in your skin, which means that it's going to cause redness and tingling on the surface of your skin. These effects are usually pretty temporary and they're not harmful in the long run. That's just a reaction that can occur with any acid or base when combined with niacinamide. Um, going back to what I said about how amides are extremely stable, that is something that I really want you to keep in mind as we're discussing all of this because the stability of a compound is something that is really, really crucial to determining whether or not something can react. I also wanted to mention that reactions are completely dependent on activation energy. And basically what activation energy is, is like, it's like a hurdle. It's like the minimum amount of energy that reactants have to have in order to be converted to a product. If the energy is not great enough, the reaction literally cannot occur because it can't overcome the activation energy. When I was researching this, I found a really, really great blog post on kindofsteven.com. I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out. Um, but basically his opinions about this whole niacinamide ascorbic acid thing basically mirror mine. Um, so I'm going to be using a lot of his points and also bringing up some of my own points. But if you want to see the article down below, um, he includes a lot of links to scientific articles, which you can't access in full because you do need like a membership at these like academic organizations, but he does like quote stuff and links to it. So you know that, you know, it's there. Steven actually talks about this really, really great metaphor about how reactions are not a long distance race. They, it's actually like a hurdle race. And so in order for the reaction to happen, you have to be able to jump over the hurdle. You can't just roll at minimum energy to the finish line. If you can't overcome the hurdle, you can't finish the race. That's basically how a reaction works. So if a reaction needs 30 kilojoules of energy in order to proceed and it only has 29, the reaction doesn't occur. In addition, the reaction proceeding is also really heavily dependent on how well the two molecules can interact together. So if you have a really liquidy, low viscosity solution that's very aqueous, um, it means that the components inside, so like the molecules can um, basically react really well with each other because there's a very high surface area that they can interact and bump into each other. And um, this is also why in a lot of reactions, when you increase the temperature of a reaction, you speed up the reaction assuming the activation energy is still high enough um, because it means that molecules are moving much faster, which means that they're probably going to collide with each other more often and there's more potential for a reaction to occur. That being said, in our skincare products, a lot of skincare serums and lotions and moisturizers are, are pretty thick and emollient, you know, like the most skincare products are not like pure water, if you know what I mean. Like there, there's some slip to it. There's some 
thickness to it so it's a higher viscosity which means that even if you combine niacinamide and vitamin c together those two molecules of bumping into each other is going to occur a lot less than we see in scientific studies where it's done in an aqueous solution. And so to further speak to the stability of niacinamide, um, there was actually a study done where they incubated, or not incubated, but they stored niacinamide in like a storage bottle for six weeks at 45 degrees Celsius, which is about 113 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's pretty hot, and a very acidic pH. And they actually found that the conversion of niacinamide to niacin never exceeded 2%. So I feel like that in its own really speaks to the stability of niacinamide. And, and so now back to the main thing of what we're talking about when you combine niacinamide and ascorbic acid, the complex that is formed is called niacinamide ascorbate. But as you can see in the illustration, the actual bond that holds these two molecules together is just sharing electrons, which is a very weak bond. And so therefore the complex is pretty easily reversed, which means that in a solution of niacinamide and ascorbic acid, they are constantly associating and dissociating back and forth, back and forth at equilibrium. At perfect equilibria, there's about 50% of the individual molecules that are existing on their own and there's 50% of a complex forming. That's a perfect equilibrium. They actually performed a study where they put niacinamide and ascorbic acid together at room temperature, which we're going to call 25 degrees Celsius, and they actually found that the constant of association was 1.45, which is really, really close to 1, which tells me that at no given time is there ever a 100% conversion of individual ascorbic acid molecules and individual niacinamide to form this complex all at once. So in a solution, there's never gonna be just purely this complex that forms, you know what I mean? The complex does form, but it is reversed and put back together again and again and again. So there is really truly no 100% nullifying effect when you combine these two ingredients together. But basically the main takeaway that I want you to walk out of this video knowing is that you can combine niacinamide and ascorbic acid. You're not gonna create a 100% solution of this useless complex. There is going to be no nullifying effect. You're not canceling the ingredients out because of the reasons I just talked about to quickly summarize them. So first of all, amides, AKA the type of molecule that niacinamide is, amides are extremely stable and they take a very, very, very long time to react in any sort of high or low pH. Two, the consistency of skincare products is much more viscous and thicker than normal aqueous solutions, which means that the likelihood of the molecules of bumping together to form this complex is much lower than what we see in scientific studies. Three, the complex that is formed, niacinamide ascorbate, is very weakly bonded by just a shared pair of electrons. And also this complex is really easily reversible at equilibrium, so it's constantly associating and dissociating. So combining the two together of niacinamide and ascorbic acid will never completely 100% nullify each other because this complex is really weak and it's constantly coming together and coming apart. And then finally, the last point is that you have to have activation energy to overcome. Just because you put two things together doesn't mean they're going to react. You have to have the right conditions and the right concentrations in order for the activation energy to be overcome and the reaction to proceed. So that is the end of the video. I had so much fun making this video because my heart is in chemistry and chemical engineering. So like this is my language. You are speaking my language right now. I know you probably can't access like full scholarly texts. Um, and so I did my best to include screenshots of like really useful useful things and I'm also going to leave citations down below in case you do have access to scholarly texts. I get access to scholarly texts because I'm a student at a university and so I get access to all those which I am so grateful for because that made planning this video much easier because I could actually access the full text instead of just the abstract. And the one thing that you'll learn the more you read scientific papers is sometimes the abstract is kind of misleading. So something to just keep in mind. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have fun combining your niacinamide and ascorbic acid products together because there is nothing to worry about. If you want to see more informational skincare videos like this one, give this video a thumbs up and comment down below with what kind of video you want to see. That is it for me though. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending this time with me and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!